All right, everybody, welcome back to Overdunk episode 117. This is your favorite Pokemon Unite podcast, your favorite competitive Unite podcast? Oh, well, we're taking over. We're taking over all of them. What's Whoa. going on, everybody? I am Zoinks, joined as always by Bridget, just the dynamic duo for this one. Uh, but it's going to be a fun episode. Bridget, how have you been? How's the new ranked season been treating you out there? Uh, you know, up and down. Okay, okay. I am not masters yet, but I've only See. probably played a couple nights. Sure. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been hard grinding this season very much, but I was excited to play on a new patch, to be honest. I was definitely getting tired mm -hmm. of uh the world's meta. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm I'm aligned. I, I think I enjoyed that last meta. I actually thought it was a pretty good yeah. one, but yeah, I was ready for some new stuff and Listen, I've been talking to some Pokemon Go players these days, and I'm like, man, I'm really glad we have multiple changes <laughs> because I am excited for what we're heading into. Because, yeah, this new patch has been pretty fun. I don't know if that's a unanimous decision, though. Some of these changes have definitely leaned a little bit in the toxic direction, but we'll get into all of that throughout the show for sure. Uh, some very exciting stuff, some very interesting stuff in this patch, um, and a lot that is going to be like, I mean... This is the first patch without EX Pokemon all of a sudden. So it's oh, yeah. definitely we're setting the pace in an interesting way um, going forward for the next few months and competitive year, potentially. So a lot to talk about, obviously. Um, but Bridget, about your ranked games, don't feel too bad. I also have not hit Masters yet. But today I did have some time to put out a few games and I... I think I joined this call and was like, Bridget, my Gudra is nice. So <laughs> I'm not saying Gudra is back. I'm not saying Gudra is taking over. I am just saying that my personal Gudra is absolutely cooking. And if you see me on the rank letter, you better ban it. Um, because Muddy Water Acid Spray is feeling real good into a lot of the field right now. I'm just I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> it didn't receive any changes. I don't want to say that at the start of the episode and people think that it was buffed or nerfed. It was not. Um, please buff Acid Acid spray muddy water when but anyway uh, <laughs> i'm i'm here for everything gudra but which is really funny because i never liked this pokemon until unite release wow. i was like oh i do like this pokemon yeah gudra was like one of my least favorite dragon type pokemon like ever i loved gumi but like slagu and gudra i was just never really jiving with but and, wow um, i know it should have been grass type like i don't know what you want from me I, <laughs> and yeah a grass dragon yeah there is grass dragon. Like, wait, wait, we have Appleton now, right? Like, that's the yeah, grass dragon and, stuff and the flapple in them, which is fine. I just do feel like grass dragon would be good. Okay, this is an insane random tangent. Bridget, have you seen any of those YouTube videos? Uh, some PokeTubers have done them, but, like, if Pokemon were to add a type, this is a type that I would like. Have you seen any oh. of those discussions? Yeah, I feel like I've seen them on, like, Twitter, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I haven't watched any YouTube okay. about it. Okay, okay. I've watched a few YouTube discussions. I haven't seen any on Twitter, but I'm, I'm curious what you think of some of these. Uh, the two I see brought up the most, but, but the one I see brought up the most, I think, is wood. Wood gets what? brought up by a lot. It's, like, wood or plant. Like, basically, re-evaluating grass type to be plant type is, like, a, is a good start. Because I, I actually think this is correct. I think grass is, like, not a great description of that type. I do think yeah. it should be plant type um, if we were to kind of start, which isn't exactly a rewind. But another one I saw people bring up is food type Pokemon. And there is a decent amount that work for food type rules. Pokemon. Like, food type could kind of work. Yeah, I actually like that's the best one you've said. Okay. IMO. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Have you seen or heard of any of those or even off the cuff have a, a type that you think would be cool? Wood was shocking. I'm surprised okay. that's popular, but I, I guess yeah. it makes sense. It's like a natural mm -hmm, mm -hmm. material. Yeah. Um, I guess this would kind of be an expansion on like rock type, but like okay. crystal, I think would be like cool. Crystal could be very cool. But yeah. I feel like that's basically Terra. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do see that a little kinda, bit. Kind of, kind of took that. 
I think I other know. popular ones end up being sound type gets brought up oh, a lot. A lot of people that's like sound what I've type. Seen a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sound type's a good one. Uh, I thought digital might be kind of cool. Like I was thinking that. Yeah, we have sure, some like, kind of say not electric type, but something else, right? Like it's it, like mechanical. Mm-hmm. Porygon would be a very great either just you just rework it to be mono digital or like normal digital or something. Yeah, would be like, a Rotom, very fun. Uh, the room maybe like early stages of zygarde could be kind of cool in that way i don't know if that necessarily works or like deoxys could be like have a form maybe where it's uh like anyway this is a lot of discussion into a topic that literally doesn't exist in our pokemon game because not on the agenda yeah there are no pokemon types i just you know no dupes next to rain us in (laughs) <laughs> so I'm really yeah he really keeps us on track yeah 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 yeah. Doom's next well known for such so that's why we're going off a little wild track but let's let's get into the the first topic which is going to be our main topic of today's episode as you can tell the title of today's episode is the hyper voltage patch honestly one of the first w's is that we're sticking to cool <laughs> af names for our episodes yes. i personally love it um so the hyper voltage patch aka 1.16.1.2 too whatever uh quite a few changes have happened uh a lot of them not necessarily pokemon balance specific that i think are really cool like there's some item changes some map changes so let's let's get into all of them bridget without further ado Bring it up on screen here. We got it on the Unite DB patch notes. Uh, if any of you are ever interested, unite-db.com slash patch notes is where we normally go on the podcast for all of these things. Uh, mostly just because the stats are pretty specific. Yeah, Pokemon's done a much better job of making their patch notes more specific, especially in the English translations recently. But uh, this is just the first place I thought to go to. So <laughs> that's where we're going. Uh, but a pretty great, uh, not a paid sponsorship, but... You know, no free shout outs, but for Unite DB, we'll make an exception. <laughs> but okay, <laughs> first changes. A Selgor and a Scavalier, the two blue buff and red buff as they're known in the community, have been nerfed. Their experience points have been reduced by 18%, and Ball Toys experience points have been increased by 33%. Why these weird numbers? The numbers literally translate that those points were taken from a Selgorn Scavalier and given to Baltoy. That is just how the experience points differentiate in terms of their growth pattern. So, now, the jungle is a little bit different. If you're trying to invade, just taking a red or a blue buff will not uh, get, net you as much experience. You'll still get the buff, of course. And the only other change I have really seen, and I was really excited about it, I was hoping it was going to be more impactful... Leafeon can still just one buff gank a lane, but it needs to knock out the ball toy as well now. So, okay. so Leafeon does need to knock out the Zot- Zatu ball toy blue red buff and then go to top or whatever. Fine. <laughs> I know, I know. It's little increments. I was like, finally, our Evolution hellscape is over. But as quite. if they would nerf an Evolution. I like, know, or on. a strategy revolving around Evolutions. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Oh my goodness. But yeah, that is uh that is where we were at. Also, I'm gonna move chat to over here. I think just it'll look a little bit better on the screen. But okay, cool. Right. Um so that is uh that's what we're looking at in terms of the buffs. Uh wh- I honestly think it's a pretty cool change. Um, it's obviously a reaction to the metagame, especially in competitive play. I, I don't know how often you were getting invaded in your ranked games. I don't know if it's a super common strategy then. It did exist, but um, this is definitely a response to how popular the in- strategy of invading the enemy central area is. And let's face it, it made it very difficult to play big scalers in lane, especially on first rotation. So maybe this will start impacting the metagame a little bit, more late game scaling pokemon like i'm looking at like your tyranitars or maybe even your single strike urshifu might fit this bill might feel a little bit Uh, safer about central area but anyway i've talked a lot about it how are you feeling about it bridget i i do you think this is a really cool change i feel like i mean when's the last time we got any changes to npc like farm yeah r.i.p natus maybe i literally that or maybe they changed how the reggie buffs worked one time i i don't remember mm-hmm. i think they would have they buffed like buffed... regice yeah they did at one yeah point. they buffed regice at one point but okay but it's been a long time it's been a long time so that's a jeopardy exciting. question by the way i gotta add that. Oh, <laughs> i gotta yeah, write that you down write, you should write that down <laughs> all right continue continue <laughs> um so very exciting and was yeah, definitely not, not expecting changes to the buffs, but mm-hmm. I will say 
I think getting invaded is pretty annoying, so I like sure. that there's some <laughs> less value there because it does feel like you get really far behind if even one of your first three jungle rotations is invaded. I feel like later in the game, it's a little less tragic, still tragic, but mm -hmm. early game, it just felt way too snowball-y. I'm curious. So, like, like you were saying, Leafeon still can get its level four by mm -hmm. doing a clear, but it not quite as efficient as it used to be. I'm like curious, like why it was 18. percent You know what I mean? I'm like, what? Oh yeah, um, I mentioned that early when I was talking about it. It like that's just the number that it needed for that that like bulk experience number to be equated into the ball toy. So like, there has yeah, been but, no I mean, overall so change. Amount for the ball toy. Like why? Be because why ball toy has ball? less experience overall, right? So like, Escavalier has more. So it only takes an 18 reduction to get that amount. But that amount is 33% to Baltoy because Baltoy has less overall. Basically, what I'm saying is the central area experience overall has not changed. It is now yeah. like there I'm is. I'm just wondering no why. I, I still don't understand how they got to that amount. I don't know if what you're saying is explaining that. Sorry. No, it's okay. I am not doing a good job of explaining it. That's okay. <laughs> but like, yeah. I, I understand that the buffs had more XP, but mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they just put it in the ball toy, but anyway it doesn't matter sorry no you're all good so yeah that is going to be the changes uh there a slightly different jungle experience i don't know maybe we'll see i i think competitive play will still see our fair amount of invasions i think that is going to still exist especially if you can steal a red buff and get away or a blue like that feels really solid but maybe it's a little less all in you know what i mean like maybe you're like you're trying to take it and run more so than these days where you don't even mind if you get KO'd after you sneak in and get that knockout because then you're just level four by the time you get back to lane and it's not a huge problem. I don't know. Maybe we'll see a bit of change there. Um, but let's uh, jump down to Zacian. So Zacian, Zacian, I literally have not learned how to say this Pokemon's name in all of the years I've done this. Uh, Joe Brown, who was on our podcast, like literally last week has gotten mad at me like every time I say it wrong. So <laughs> one of these days I'll get it right. But uh, this is one of the first Pokemon that has now lost their EX license title and has now received a host of nerfs to try to adjust it a little bit more to the rest of the cast. Basically, general attack stats going down, mostly in the boosted auto attacks, which are a big part of Zacian's kits, most likely, or sorry, most importantly, the fourth one that kind of gives you that little mini dash on that Pokemon once you stack up the four boosteds. Um, all of them, just the, they all do maximum HP damage. They've all been reduced by just about a percent. So, um, toning it down a little bit. And then when you use agility, uh, your shield is a little bit less. I think they're just trying to make play rough on this Pokemon viable as well, just because agility feels the best uh, whenever you're playing Zacian. It's just, it's kind of like on Dodrio, same way. It's just like another little full heal you get to throw in here and there, and it feels really good. But have you seen any Zacians these days when you've been playing on the ranked ladder, Bridget? I feel like I haven't seen this mod in months. Yeah, okay. I'm being honest. <laughs> it's, it has been a minute for sure. Yeah, do yeah, I, I feel like it was... Do you think that it was one of the more balanced ones even before we lost the license title? I mean, weren't they banned in rank last season once you hit master? I think, no, last season or you could play they... four, I think, because that was like Ho-Oh launch. So they wanted oh, you to play, yeah. but it was the year, the year, the season before that one that they were all banned or just one. You could only have one per team. Forget yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One of the other. Mm -hmm. But Maridon was crazy then. So it was like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I really can't even say if this was like warranted or not, if I'm mm -hmm. being honest, just because it's been Zacian so long. didn't feel impactful. Mm hmm. And obviously in tourneys, because it has been illegal since Worlds right. last year. And it's... I feel like there's just not even any pro to playing the former EX Mons like, throughout the entire year. Because you never knew if they were going to be like banned or not each season. So it was like, why am I even going to try to learn how to play this Mon if I can't even play it? Right. <laughs> for yeah. most of the time in rent. I don't know. It just feels like there was no incentive at all. Yeah. So even when they were allowed, mm -hmm. it was kind of hard to justify, unless you are like a gold badge 
right. Zacian player. <laughs> you embrace the, the comb fey in the before yeah. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then maybe you started bringing that Pokemon out. Yeah, I, I think it is one of the more balanced on their roster. It is still powerful, but this feels like one of those Pokemon that actually does the whole AO synergy translation into points thing pretty well. Uh, I think with the state it's in, you do kind of feel the absence of that third item. I don't know. I'm pretty pro Sword Wolf these days. So I think it's pretty cool. Um, a Pokemon that did receive a ton of nerfs. However, I don't know if we've quite got it to the spot that we needed to, but that's all right. Ho-Oh, another Pokemon that receives a ton of nerfs. I, they start with this one. I think it might be the most impactful one in my opinion, is Regenerator. So Regenerator was his passive, basically was a leftovers passive that happened all the time. Um, yeah. So it just was a little bit less well in combat and a little more well out of combat. But now in combat, HP recovery every two seconds has been decreased to just slightly less of your max HP by 0.1%. So in combat, very little change. But out of combat has been reduced by an entire percent. So 4% of max HP down to 3% of max HP. Um, I don't know. It, it's solid. This is one of the biggest complaints around Ho-Oh was that just every time you fought it, it was at full HP. And it never needed to base because you were just roaming. Uh, while you were out of combat, you were just healing. It was it was totally fine. So having that change, I think uh, I think pretty good. Uh, all the moves got nerfed as well. Tailwind, Fire Spin, Sky Attack, Fly, and its Unite move a little bit. Um... Yeah, I don't know. The I do like the change on the Unite move that your allies will only drop feathers if you have your Unite. So there were some cases, especially around that first Reggie, like if your team's kind of dominating, you lose a couple targets, but you get nine mid-fight or from a Reggie or something, and then you just immediately click it and res those two characters that are still on respawn. Um, that won't be possible anymore. So a little bit less of like huge burst of life at level nine. Now you're going to kind of, as soon as you hit level nine, you're going to start thinking of how to use it. Um, you saw almost no Zation. How about Ho-Oh out there, Bridget? These... I mean, these changes seem helpful, but mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. uh, still feels the same to me okay. to play against. I really dread it. I honestly <laughs> thought they just changed the feather thing because I thought it was like, because I've played a bit of Ho Oh, I thought it was just like annoying that like you could be level two and your ally <laughs> dies and they're dropping a feather. And I'm like, let's just. That's just incorrect. Like, that's just not <laughs> happening. Uh, so that's okay, why I thought fair. they changed it. I didn't realize it actually, like, mattered for anything, but... Yeah, it'd um, be a pretty niche situation where it would matter, I guess. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, but still, yeah. Mm -hmm. The... I mean, I've played ladder games where the enemy ho -Oh revives one guy and it, like, saves them ray fight. Yes, for sure. <laughs> in... in uncoordinated you know i'm on ladder in ultra lobbies and these it is like game winning ult from one guy mm -hmm. and the other guy like paying attention but he got res so i can only <laughs> imagine what this is going to be looking like in like coordinated play it yeah. seems i just feel like the ult uh unless it gets you know more nerfs the ult is going to make it just always useful yeah it feels like a slow bro situation but maybe yes. even more you know what i mean yes. like it is uh it is just always going to be strong especially in draft mode especially in coordinated play i don't care what the rest of the kit does <laughs> as long honestly as that it still feels does strong what it needs to do exactly um i have got to cast one tournament on this patch so the underdunk tournament happened last thursday it was absolutely a blast um and i got to witness one full team res by home Oh, it was Are you insane. Serious? I it was that. so good. Yeah, it was fantastic. It was a full four players up. God, and Ender oh, and I were losing so our minds, bad. and they like dominated after the fight too. Like they popped Dude. back up and just blew up the because the other team was already like barely alive. Too. It was a very close you know. fight. I think they and the crazy thing was I think they had knocked out Ho Ho like kind of at like two Early. two o two to like two ten, but like um. Ho Ho's res timer was like pretty short still so it was like able to join the fight as his friends were dying and then wrestle them up but it was like oh my god it's crazy um so that was kind of wild i ooh, that's another if they're looking for ideas how to nerf ho oh more because i think <laughs> in the state it is i actually don't think it's too like 
I don't know, game breaking in ranked and stuff like that. I, I do think in yeah. I do think in tournament play, thank God the ban system. Like I think Ho oh was gonna be as close to yes. a perma ban as we get in the next few tournaments. Um it was in the in the Underdunk event. It, it was a couple of games that showed up. I think it went two and one on broadcast when we got nice. it in. But we casted a lot of games, right? So it wasn't seen very often, but I think it went two and one overall. Um Anyway, I think one thing they could change, they already said they're changing with the feather dropping until you have your Unite move. What if teammates don't drop a feather unless you're alive? Oh, that's you know? interesting. If, like, ho -Oh was, like, waiting to res, and, like, if you knock out ho -Oh, like, now is the go, go, go. <laughs> now is yeah. the time. Which you is know? kind of how, like, there's definitely, you know, it, it kind of also reminds you of, like, Hoopa. It's like, oh, like... You just yeah. have to jump on that guy first, almost. Yes, like for sure. Except Ho Oh just has more defensive stats because it's a defender, yeah, right? A so that makes it very, very challenging in that uh, regard. Um, definitely, definitely. I mean, Ho Oh or Hoopa's stats when it's unbound is kind of crazy. Um, but obviously, you're usually trying to knock it out before it gets to that point. Before it um, does that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay. Anyway, I, I think Ho Oh is still kind of a yet to be seen, and I feel like that our sentiment's gonna be. A lot of that towards a lot of these EX Pokemon, right? Like, it's... Yeah. They've been around, but it's still new. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not too sure. Um, I can't wait to talk about Mewtwo, because I had some... I also had some fun tournament thoughts on Mewtwo uh, okay. when it happened. Didn't do very well, but had some cool text that was kind of fun to watch but anyway okay. uh the huge change to sylveon this pokemon i've seen everywhere in my ranked yeah. games i don't know about you everyone in my ranked games have seen it quite a bit in tournament play as well hyper voice got that big old rework if you haven't seen it on twitter um i don't know how you missed it because it takes up your entire screen now and so, uh, Hyper Voice now has a huge angle, a, um, not quite a semicircle, but almost a very large cone in front of Sylveon. Um, the damage did get reduced a little bit, and I will say, I think I can feel that impact. Like, I f especially because I play a what? lot of melee brawlers, and I'm like, I can hang in front of a Sylveon longer than I could have. But now I can't get out. Sure. Which is yes. my problem playing <laughs> okay. supports with like no mobility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just like. Well, and that might be an effect of the new rework to the Hyper oh. Voice Plus. Now, when you hit Hyper Voice Plus for Sylveon, you are slowing the enemy by 30%, which is. Uh, it's pretty crazy. A lot. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. And it's also a huge AoE. It's very, very strong now. I don't know. Sylveon is... For the longest time, Umbreon's kind of been always that Pokemon. It's like, I, the closer you get to them, the more you're going to like F around and find out, for <laughs> lack of a better <laughs> way to say it. I feel like Sylveon's coming close to that level of play as well. Same with something like maybe like Alolan Ninetales. Like if you get within range, you're like kind of asking. <laughs> it's dangerous yeah. damage that's going to be thrown out the other way. And then Sylveon also just getting some other nice buffs, right? Draining Kiss now healing a ton. The slow going from 20% to 50% on a Pokemon just... that is hit by Draining Kiss. Like, Sylveon is a lockdown mage now. We did not. I don't think <laughs> Sylveon needed any buffs. <laughs> mm. Mm. Maybe a Unite move buff, but... Sure. Okay. I do not get, I don't really understand any of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, well, icing on the cake, baby doll eyes is now a sure hit move instead of a ranged move. Thank God. Give it Shell Bell too. Yeah. Fuck me, man. <laughs> I don't even know if it's going to Shell Bell. I'm just mad. <laughs> okay, so Bridget hates Sylveon confirmed. I'm um, not a fan. Good to hear. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think I talked about this. I don't even know if it was on our podcast or if it was not. But when these, these changes were kind of uh, hinted at on Twitter, like they they were on the PTS before they hit the live game. I was like. I don't know. I think it's a fine change. I think it's interesting. I'm not as negative on it as Bridget is, clearly. But I was like, when looking at it, I was, people were making the argument, like, oh, it's so less skill now. And I'm like, if you thought Hyper Voice was skill before, like, yeah, I'm, I don't really. Listen, I am sorry. Uh, I do not think that is the case. Uh, but I mean, the range is kind of ridiculous. Uh, Unite DB has the stats here. The angle, it was a 35% range from forward from the point of targeting. So basically, the from the point to the end of the Hyper Voice, it was a 35% increase out either direction. Now it goes from that to 120%. So, yeah. uh, we're going wide. We're hitting a lot. But like I said, the damage does get reduced a little bit. Um, 
But yeah, you were slowed and stuck in that Sylveon's range of damage quite a bit. So there it is. <laughs> there it is. Um, let, let's move on. Let, let's move on to kind of the... To, the... to the better mage. Yes, the somehow even better special attacker. Um, Bridget, I think you said it before we jumped on. Maybe it was during the podcast. They hit the Pikachu button, okay? Pikachu, sure Pikachu is here and it is everywhere. So visual effects for Pikachu have been updated. Uh, great. Also... <laughs> Volt Tackle has been buffed again. Cooldown has been decreased from 10 seconds down to 9 seconds uh, with a special attacker that really likes running cooldown emblems and stuff like that. Uh, you're going to make that real quick. <laughs> um, new effect as well. Gain 25% movement speed for 2 seconds after using Volt Tackle. This, I will say, is a good change. I like the movement speed buff. It's so often it was just never worth volt tackling unless yeah. you had like three or four members of your team beside you, right? To capitalize on it. But now with the movement speed buff, you can risk jumping into the enemy because you might still be able to get away. You know, you can get launch in with the volt tackle, hold one target and still make it instead of being like, well, if my teammate doesn't knock out this Dodreo, I'm doomed. <laughs> you know, so that being changed is a little bit better. But this this is the big crazy change that has made this Pokemon relevant both competitively and it's everywhere in ranked right now. Thunderstorm, its Unite move has had a huge buff. Now, the number of Pokemon struck by subsequent lightning bolts has increased from one to two. So effectively doubling the damage of <laughs> Pikachu's Unite move, but also making it a much more relevant team fight option, and it's way less of a random dice roll. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but Bridget, what are your thoughts on the Pikachu changes? Not super surprising. Honestly, Pikachu has been not really respected for a long time. Mm -hmm. I really feel like it wasn't until Worlds when yeah. we were seeing like Korea and Japan like playing Pikachu seriously that yeah. was like i was i was surprised because i would not have guessed we were going to see pikachu at all mm -hmm. um, and pre that was pre-buff so <laughs> the fact that it did honestly like pretty well on the world stage and they were like you know what <laughs> send it maybe we make it better <laughs> um is interesting but not surprising it is the mascot it really hasn't been relevant in a super long time mm -hmm. um I'm also a little biased. I love playing Pichu. I'm much more of a circle thunder thunderbolt enjoyer. Sure. I will volt tackle if it's an absolute meta and mm -hmm. I have to. <laughs> um, but the unite move is what excites me the most. I yeah. feel like the movement speed for volt tackle is definitely significant, especially since if you are playing with a brain, you know that <laughs> Pikachu lands in the exact spot that it jumped from. So yes. if, uh, you know, it's basically like a sitting duck once you get back to that spot. So if people aren't paying attention or there's like more of a room for escape, like you were mm -hmm. saying, um, you're not as much of a sitting duck. So yeah. that is helpful. But the Unite move rules. Yeah, I crazy. love uh, that it's so much more impactful because I honestly thought Pikachu's Unite move prior was good, but... I didn't really ever consider how much true RNG there was when mm -hmm. you are using it in a team fight. So yeah, cool to see it get this change. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, on that Underdunk tournament cast, Ender and I were talking about this Pokemon, and the the change of this Unite move has been pretty relevant, even in how it's played competitively. Like in previous times, if Pikachu found a target, uh, either alone or just a squishy that it wanted to try to initiate a one v one, Pikachu would often Unite move. It's one of the fastest Unite move charge rates in the game, if not the fastest. Pikachu might be at the top of the list. It's very very good. Um, but either way, I oftentimes tank players in competitive play would just jump in the Pikachu aura to make it like a coin flip if the lightning bolts would hit the intended target or the tank <laughs> again and again right like to even while the other targets trying to run away the tank just jumps in range to try to buy some time um now it's just <laughs> you gotta just gotta roll with whatever thunderstorm throwing um because either you both get hit or one of you gets hit so just make a run for it um yeah, Pikachu just a much more relevant team fighter now, which I think is really cool. I think with this Unite move change, it's all it needed to be relevant in that way. I think before it was a incredible laner, but then after that, it wasn't super great in a lot of the team fight aspects. But now, Pikachu, I'm back on top. 
Uh, let's move on to the next one. One of my favorite Pokemon of the world. I know not a lot of people's, but the Mimikyu changes. It did get buffed. Did it need it? No. Does it matter? No. Um, Trick Room got buffed. Uh, both effects, 8.5 second cooldown down to 7 seconds. And then in Trick Room Plus, 7 point seconds down to 6 seconds. Um... Damage reduction also gets buffed from Mimikyu as well from external sources. So that's damage coming from outside of the trick room. Uh, the big rectangle, or square rather. Um, 50% to 70%. Uh, trick room is so fun. It's just... <laughs> you just have to pick Shadow Sneak. <laughs> like, I, it is such a good move. But Trick Room is unbelievably fun. I've definitely been trying it a bit. You just slap a Razor Claw back on Mimikyu. You jump into ranked games. You play some Trick Room. It's it's a blast. It is genuinely such a fun move. Yeah, I wish they would have nerfed Shadow Sneak in addition to this. Mm. So, Because like you said, how are you ever not picking shadow sneak yeah no offense no offense to trick room but mm -hmm. that move is insane <laughs> the resets you can get off it are insane. it's just yeah yeah you know <laughs> the ability to finish kills too which is something that's pretty absent i think in a lot of pokemon's kit that are mm. like I don't know. It's something that doesn't get talked about too much, but if you miss on a kill in United, it can be pretty devastating for a few reasons. One, you're giving ult charge a lot of the time to people who can heal or whatever. But the biggest thing is, like, recall times are so fast in Unite. Like, if you get True. to a piece of tall grass, you click that recall button, you're basically back in grass, like, immediately. Um, mm -hmm. Mimikyu's ability to make sure that people get close out on those KOs is fantastic. Um, so, yeah, Shadow Sneak for that is phenomenal. Um, Trick Room maybe a bit more of a team fight. I don't, maybe there was a realm where like Eldegoss Leaf Tornado comes back and Mimikyu's the hard <laughs> counter. I don't know. I'm down for it though. Can you imagine all of a sudden uh, Leaf Tornado turns into like drop kick for your own team? You're like, no. <laughs> oh, that'd be awesome. Um, yeah, bring back, bring back the ADC meta. Please. We need it. We need it. Yeah. Well, here's another special attacker. Uh, Gengar. <laughs> a oh. ton of buff. So Gengar not making their changes into the Shadow Flame Part 2 patch. Instead, <laughs> uh, swinging into Hyper Voltage. So shout out to... We, we love a flexible ghost, okay? Um, <laughs> Dream Eater getting changed quite a bit. Just a cooldown buff as well as getting a lot more healing. Um, both its base stats and the uh, percentage ratio that it goes up by both getting increased. And then Hex also getting a buff. Basically, Basically, the cooldown on Hex going down a little bit, and the Unite move Phantom Ambush also getting buffed. 134 seconds, down to 112 seconds. With how fast Gengar farms, I don't think you were ever worried about the internal clock timer, but you're definitely going to be getting your Unite move a little quicker now, um, which is nice. Uh, Gengar... <laughs> This is an interesting one. I'm super... Uh, you share first. Bridget, I'm curious. What are your thoughts on Gengar right now? I actually... I'm really, I was scared. I'm always scared when I see a Gengar buff. Okay. I am not, <laughs> I don't really want to live in a world where this is dominating the meta. Mm -hmm. Although I guess I could run Safeguard Blissey again. And that's always a good time for me. Mm -hmm. But I must say, I was pretty afraid when I saw these initial changes, but I've definitely been running into them on ladder. And I am sorry to report that it's still Gengar. And I mm -hmm. don't really feel like... It's like, I think it still has a lot of really hard counters. There's so many oh, yeah. micro stuns in this game. Mm -hmm. I haven't really been having too much trouble with it, but I do think it makes, it definitely needed it. Yes, so for sure. I'm glad, but I don't think it's like, I feel like a lot of people, maybe I just haven't, I'm in ultra lobbies. I don't know. Maybe I just haven't seen it like shine necessarily, but I don't think it's. Like, to me, like, Pikachu won this patch. Like, oh, not yeah. Gengar. Yeah, Gengar. Between the two, I don't think it's particularly close. <laughs> like, well, if you, I, had to pick a, if you had to pick a winner, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sure. I feel like a lot of people would say, like, Gengar. I, I feel like I see a lot of people, like, really loving Gengar. And I'm okay. like... Uh, I mean, I will admit, I really like the changes. I think they're fun, but it's just because Gengar is like probably my favorite speedster to play <laughs> in the game, yeah. right? Like, I, I like playing exactly. Gengar as a speedster. I don't think this makes it competitively viable. I will die on the hill. I've I've said this, and I'll keep saying it forever. I don't think Gengar has ever been broken. Like, I genuinely don't. Um, I, 
<laughs> like people just needed to learn how to play around it, and they did yeah. back in the early game, right? Like I'm saying, maybe days. like early, early like season one, season two, right? Like, like past Gengar, no one but stunned you're right. Him. You know, like everyone was playing yeah. Snorlax and no one was putting a block in his face. Like it, it was just. Yeah, I'm it playing was... Eldegoss, man. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just hitting the A button. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I agree. But um, having some of these changes, I think pretty good for Gengar. I do not think it is as broken as Twitter was leading us all to believe. Hey, okay, I feel like I was seeing a lot of people like really. Oh, for scared. sure. Yeah, no, people were like, "Oh my god, oh Gengar's back! This is crazy." I'm like, yeah, it rips Ray a little fast there now that is true <laughs> well, that I, is I think it's just it does snowball harder than it used to I will yes. I will give it that especially because of the unite move change um mm -hmm. you, if you were like dominant you're picking up a three pack like every single time you gank a lane yeah you're gonna get your unite move more <laughs> you're gonna keep rocking up like I think it snowballs harder and that's a cool spot for Gengar to be in right it's a three stage speedster it's a late game Pokemon like mid to late game Pokemon that has been you know, it's hell bent on that. Dominate the game, but if you are playing Gengar from behind, you are having a tough time out there. So, I I think I'm a pretty big fan. I don't know. Let's buff it again. Give it an invis anyway. Okay, uh, chill. <laughs> time for Buzzwool. <laughs> okay, Buzzwool got a Leaf Life buff. Buff. Uh, <sighs> leash Life buff. Uh oh, interesting. You sound upset about this. I'm only upset because now people are just like, pl people are spamming it. And I'm like, stop playing Leech Life. <laughs> it's bad. It's You're bad. running it down. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed. Okay, That's so. the only, I, I mean, it, I don't know. I guess this move is bad, but I don't really know what you would do to make it not bad. Uh -huh, if I'm being sure. honest. Yeah. No, I, I, I get you. Um, peek behind the curtain. Bridget and I are obviously queuing together. She's yelling at me. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. We have not sliding. played. I'm sliding. We have not played on this patch yet, but she would probably be if I was You're playing it. You're allowed to play it. You're okay, allowed to play okay. it. I, I do really enjoy the Leech Life lunge build of this Pokemon, um, but I've said this before, back when Buzzbull was first coming out, I... It literally just love razor claw so much <laughs> and, That's what it is. and like any pokemon that can enable that item to work well and leech life lunge buzzwool does really good <laughs> with razor okay. um so i'm a fan of that but to <laughs> to agree with you i say it with a sad heart but you are right leech life <laughs> is still not the play between superpower and leech life it's just superpower just does simply too much and it does too much to too many things like leech life is on paper it is a great 1v1 play like you should never lose a 1v1 in which you have leech life available bro However, smack, superpower, yeah, exactly. Which there's like, yeah, caveats there. But superpower, uh, like, you could one v three sometimes with superpower. You know, you're like hitting multiple targets that, that you got your big muscle cage charging up insanely fast. Like I don't know. So anyway, eight seconds down to five seconds, and it's healing also moving up. I genuinely think these buffs are great. But I don't think that this Pokemon has gotten that uh, to work yet. But yeah, it could work for Tank Buzz. I, I see Dextro saying that in chat. Yeah, that's true. I do think we are going to be entering the world of all rounder like tank, uh, all rounder tanks pretty soon. Like by that I mean just strapping an EXP share on. One other, I, I know we brought up Ender like a hundred times on this, but just that tournament that hey, he and I did, obsessed. we talked about a lot of good stuff. But <laughs> Bridget, one thing it was funny is he was like, we were. He's like, I still don't think that it was support Mew at Worlds. He was like, I <laughs> will go down there. It was, uh, they were still in the attacker role, but they just had an EXP share now, which is, you know, kind of an interesting way to think about it. I hadn't thought about that too much, but maybe we'll start to see that from some all-rounders. I feel like Buzzwool can handle that. Mewtwo X in particular, a Pokemon that's well-known to have Real. the... Um, I have been, I have to admit, uh, <laughs> a couple of my wins have come on the back of Tank Mewtwo X. And it is so fun um, to just, like, yeah, yoink would... people back off the goal zone and then just, oh, just punch them so good, Bridget. <laughs> You're just oh punching them God. so good. Um, I okay. know you are. Yeah. Okay, let's let's get off Buzzle because, honestly, not very much has changed, so we got a lot to talk about still. So I know. Sarah Ledge, uh, got some nerfs. Spitterblade going 
down a little bit again. This is after that huge buff they gave to Bitterblade uh, for Sarah Lich in the first Shadow Flame patch. But um, going down its damage ratio a little bit, both in its percentage and its base stats. Phantom Force now slows the enemy a little bit less. So from 90% down to 60%. And Psycho Cut also receiving a nerf. Um, its stats stay the same, just its base value goes down a little bit. So... If you're stacking, you're probably not going to notice the cycle cut change, but otherwise, um, yeah, a little bit lower. Uh, yeah, good. We need we need to keep nerfing this Pokemon. This is this is fine. <laughs> We're tuning it. They could have went harder on Sarah Ledge for sure. I'm looking at the Unite move. Honestly, I think they should move the Unite move charge timer up. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. let's yeah, let it take longer. Like, force this Pokemon into jungle. I think one of its like crazy relevant parts of it in the meta game right now is that it can exist in both lane or jungle and be totally fine. Um, Real. so let's uh let's move that up a little bit. But you know, fine. They're adjusting some things. They're buffing others. I'm okay with this balance strategy as a whole. But Sarah Ledge probably could have received a few more buffs. <laughs> or sorry. Not buffs. Few more nerfs. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard because part of me is like, get this thing out of. Like, I agree. I think it's still like very relevant, very good. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, it's the alt for me that is probably uh the most painful. But it's hard because it's like I don't I don't really like like what they did to Phalanx where they mm. kind of nerf it so hard that it just falls off. Just completely yeah. yeah because although phalanx was like pretty annoying to deal with for i mean a little bit in comparison to like kind of like leafeon that's been mm -hmm. relevant since its launch i feel like yeah. i don't know and phalanx I, was so fun to play around in draft too though right because like mm -hmm. we had the on paper counters and everything like he's got this weird achilles heel or rather five achilles heels you know like that could you could try to play around yeah it's extra i know phalanx is bugged we actually have a, a weird patch of bugs <laughs> in this one oh, not yeah. a lot of like game breaking oh no this pokemon's broken now a lot of detrimental ones and some goofy ones we'll, we'll talk about some of those in a minute <laughs> but um but yeah, let's. Uh, yeah, they they do not know how to fix uh, Felix's code. In fact, they don't know how to fix it in any game. They finally put it in Pokemon Go after the first time where it didn't work. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. remember that. Where oh it was yeah, like, I got one. Did it was you, like just recently though, right? Yes. <laughs> no, like I got one weird. like when it first launched. Oh, I got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a hilarious bug. Um. So yeah, they don't know how to bug code Felix. <laughs> I don't think in any title, but yeah. All right, um, Sarah Lich, yeah, we think we're all talking about good nerfs. Uh, Blaziken, also getting a decent amount of nerfs. It's crit chance all kind of plummeting, and yeah. for the most part, having its critical hit chance at any given level, as well as Blaze Kick going down, Fire Punch going down, and Fire Punch Plus going down. Kind of shocked Overheat is not amid these changes. Uh, agree, agree. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am a little confused on what we thought the best part of the kit was. I, okay, Fire Punch, Fire Punch was annoying. I'm yes. not mad. I'm just, like, disappointed. It's like, uh -huh. why, why, why touch everything else but that? Like, yeah. I guess... I don't know. I don't... I, I Like, they, they want it to be a secure bot or whatever, but... Maybe like I don't know, make the box like a little smaller. I don't know. It just feels mm -hmm. a little box a little smaller would be interesting. You could, you know how like there's that little bar of like max damage mm. or whatever it is. What if we put that yeah. later? Yeah, I you don't know. Hate like that. make it have longer charge time to be at relevant. So like you have to be set up even earlier in like objective secure situations, like that kind of thing yeah. would be interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of things they could do with blades to get this. Definitely feels like a first pass and a very light one at that. Um, all that being said, I was still on Bridget. I have not seen very much Blaziken in my ranked games. That being said, you and I are both in Ultra, and <laughs> this Pokemon is a like high skill Pokemon. Like, Definitely. it is amidst the, like, more difficult Pokemon on the roster to play, and even then some, it is amongst the roster of the Pokemon that the better you are, the more impact you're going to have of, like, takeover potential. Zorark, Blaziken, even Zeraora in some fashion, like, those Pokemon tend to feel like that, and this is, uh, I think Blaziken definitely one of those, but... 
Um, Great. Yeah, all right. Nerf over here next time, guys. All right, let's go on. <laughs> uh, Slowbro. Natural stats getting nerfed. Both its cooldown reduction and its base... Base? Its oh. base health. Um, Its base health goes way down in the late game, by the way. This Pokemon kind of plummets in terms of stats. Like, level 12 went from 7, 7183 down to 7862. So, a few hundred amongst all of them. Um... I think 500 at max level at like level 15. Um, so Slowbro still pretty tanky in the early game, but throughout the later game, it will be easier to KO Slowbro, um, which is pretty fascinating. Obviously, it's a Pokemon that has everything in its toolkit, helps it not go down. <laughs> You know, it <laughs> surf stun, skull damage reduction, telekinesis, heal, and stop, amnesia, super heal, like, and slow beam, of course, like, everything will help it out there. So I think nerfing its base stats is actually one of the best directions they could go in. I actually really like this. Um, cooldown reduction, also getting reduced. Uh, now it just never gets cooldown reduction. Cool. Yay. Yeah, right. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't want to get hurt by Surf Plus more. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think that change is good. Yeah, Slowbro definitely getting the, the nerf hammer a little bit here. Yeah, definitely interesting out of... I mean, we did get the Ho-Oh nerfs, but out of, like, Trev or um, Umbreon, we're getting yeah. the Slowbro nerf. But honestly, the more I think about it, I feel like they have been trying to pare down the Slowbro for a while, and yeah. they kind of can't, because its Unite move is just, like... It's just too good. <laughs> always good. So I actually feel like this kind of makes it... They're like, okay, if you have the Unite move, you can't have everything else, too. And we can't... What mm. else can we do to the, to the Unite move? to right. make it worse like not a lot so mm -hmm. i i definitely get this because so bro good yeah. always like, yeah. i don't even think this will like really hurt it that much mm -hmm. yeah dextro in chat saying it's a bit more of a nerf to damage bro yeah i i, I guess so the cooldown reduction definitely um being for sure a there but Okay, uh, down to some bug fixes. Dragon Bolt, fix the bug where Dreep and Destroy would target Sarah Ledge hidden with Phantom Force. We didn't need to fix that. <laughs> that was fine. <laughs> we can put it back. Put the bug back, please. <laughs> Make Dragon Bolt relevant in some way, please. Uh, yeah, let him have something. <laughs> oh, that's too bad. Okay, Tyranitar, fix the bug where Tyranitar could reuse Sand Tomb's second activation by exiting and re entering the Sand Tomb area. That's funny. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's hilarious. Uh, Duraludon. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to read every bug fix. What am I talking about? Um. Yes. The Dural one is actually good, though. Is it? Is it? Okay, I'll read it. Fix an okay, issue where well. Duraludon's boosted attack damage cap applied to the entire boosted attack instead of just the percentage to max HP portion. Oh, yeah, great. All right, well, shout out Dural. Anyway. I don't like that you Pokemon. Know, I don't want to good good too. I'm not reading it. Oh, my gosh. Wait, yes. Actually, I, w I regret <laughs> saying that. I will read it. Dodrio, fix the bug where footsteps were too loud. I was... <laughs> I was I, watching Spraggle stream. Like, is so funny. Oh my god! I was watching Spraggle stream, and he was losing it. <laughs> it was match. footsteps. Yeah, well, he was like, I, I, I hate playing this now. I, this is awful. <laughs> he was, oh, because it's too quiet. Well, well, they were too loud originally. Oh, like, I thought he liked. I thought he liked them. Being no, loud, no, 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 because it, it sounded terrible <laughs> while it was happening. It was like. <gasps> <laughs> the whole time especially because like uh, most people at this point in the game's life cycle aren't playing with music on or anything right so any sound effects are like <laughs> very loud and very apparent yeah i so. don't usually play with in-game audio on at all so any okay. audio problem i'm just like oh i i, <laughs> the, I really i'm just a holdout for in-game audio just for like unite move indicators it is, is the biggest thing smart to play it is not i just kind of never did and then mm -hmm. when i realized like sounds kind of mattered i was like well <laughs> too late i, I now guess i find it like overstep i'm like it's it, like it's too loud fair enough talk too much yeah that no i i get that instead we're playing with <laughs> country music yeah okay well like, <laughs> I, I did pretty good yeah i'm not gonna lie the to you science is there okay yeah um 
A couple more changes. Zarina, this is not, it was a shadow buff, was not included in the patch, but no, so shout out to Unite TB uh, for bringing this one in. The Unite move, Queen's Ascendance, now works the same way as Charizard, Mimikyu, or Slowbro. It now bounds to unstoppable targets as well. This is hilarious. I was watching Ender's stream the other day, and his Charizard, like, Unite and, like, ejected a, no, it was, he was playing Talonflame. And Talonflame, oh. like, Unite move all the way down a lane, but because Zarina targeted him, like, while he was doing, the Talonflame was doing the whole, like, pull back thing, the Zarina, like, flew across the screen. My God. And chased it down. Where it was like, oh, this game of Unite is, we have gone too far. We have gone too <laughs> far. But anyway. Uh, this is a huge buff to Zarina. Like, crazy good now. You're no longer able to unstoppable bait out Zarina Unite moves, and Zarina can grab any target that includes a Unite moving Charizard or apparently Talonflame. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, very, very good shadow buff to this Pokemon. Um, and honestly, kind of cool. I mean, Zarina has not been relevant in quite some time. I think people have talked about how it could be good in a few... I know Ven talked a lot about, like, our post worlds episode how she thought it was a really good answer to a lot of the metagame stuff uh we didn't see it too much we saw it here and there but um hey now it's even better so i definitely think we could see some more zarina popping up yeah i hope so i like serena i think it needs something to make it stand out i guess amongst all the all-rounders but mm -hmm. It's always been like rated very highly in the East. So, yeah. And we were talking a little bit beforehand that it's nice to see, nice and also scary, I guess, to see something else get the unstoppable <laughs> ult treatment because now it's like, oh, I don't have to pick Charizard or Mimikyu. Like, there's mm -hmm. another one that fills that niche, but also maybe like, don't do this to all of them, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It really feels at this point like, Oh, what patch will have bound over unstoppable next, <laughs> you know, like yeah. what, which Pokemon next time, but <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge. When we get to it. Okay. Final change of the patch. Uh, this is shell bell getting a pretty huge buff. So I'm only going to read off the level 20 plus because it's basically where everybody's got the item at at this point. It is now um, moving up from 45% to 60% stat um, bonus and then 75 to 80 in terms of damage. Um, awesome. Shell Bell receiving buffs is sick. It, it is an item that has gotten so outclassed by Spoon and Cursed Incense. It is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so cool to see this item again. Uh, I know you had a particular Pokemon that you liked running. What, uh, what Pokemon have you found a use for with Shell Bell? New and okay, improved. I'm not running. I'm a victim. Okay, to... <laughs> okay. Still counts, but yeah. <laughs> Petal Venusaur players are need to get out of my lobbies. I don't really <laughs> actually know if like equipping Shell Bell is like making them better or if people just like or people aka me just forgot how broken mm -hmm. Petal Dance was because I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. But I do think combination of the meta this item getting a buff and whatever freaking gold badge Venu I kept queuing into <laughs> that was running this into me an hour straight. Uh -huh. Um, I and okay, and my friend, uh, shout out my friend Ghosty, who was a really good Venu player, loves Petal Venu. I was watching him stream and play it, cool. and his fa like watching his reaction to him playing it was like hilarious because he actually like he would be like wiping the entire team in a team fight for like two minutes and walk away just like full HP. I'm like. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man. No good. <laughs> so special attackers, I think, are up. I don't actually know if Shell Bell is optimal or what it's optimal on mm -hmm. or if it's actually, you know, numerically significant. So but we might need it, some... kind of, it kind of feels like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I was going to say, we might need some math core demons out there to tell us yeah. where it's optimal and where it's not. <laughs> Where's I, Wither? Yeah, straight up, I think Shell Bell could replace Spoon on some Gudra builds. This is the most irrelevant, Ooh. irrelevant build tech to ever exist. <laughs> no, but like, you're if, you're, if you're running like D-Pulse Gudra, you could probably put Shell Bell in there instead of Spoon. I don't know. Huh? Well, <laughs> actually, what would give you more healing? I guess it depends on how many targets you hit. Like, if you're just hitting one target, Bell's probably better but if you're hitting multiple targets doing more damage is better for more healing and at that point maybe it doesn't matter i don't know mm. 
Interesting, interesting. We gotta get the math people on. But Sounds like math, yeah. Sounds like math, and you and I, not equipped. So, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for going through the patch with us. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, please let us know who you think was the biggest patch winner. Uh, I think you and I are <laughs> pretty indifferent that it is Pikachu, uh, but... Who knows what it might bring. Um, let's hit a couple more topics, probably a little bit faster than we did the, uh, the patch what? notes discussion. Uh, but that's fine. Richard, first thing, and this isn't in our um, in our run of show, but I did want to mention, we got Armourouche coming, coming out in a couple days. Have you gotten yeah. the chance to look at that Pokemon at all? I actually, I'm... I usually do not look at leaked movesets or anything. I kind of just like wait for it to be in the game, but I'm so excited about the upcoming Pokemon that they announced at Worlds. I've actually watched all of the oh, test server stuff on their kits because I am so excited, That's especially awesome. for a new attacker. When's the last time we got a new attacker that wasn't Maridon? Oh, before Maridon, we were going deep. That was a lot like, of all rounders. Like Mewtwo? Mewtwo Y, maybe? Yeah. Jeez. That's insane. That's insane. So That's I. Attackers are kind of like my guilty pleasure. I wouldn't say I'm great, but if I'm not playing a tanker support, I'm usually playing attacker. Cool. So I'm pretty excited. And I love armor. Actually, I'm a big armors fan. I yes, like armor so much you. more than um, whoa, okay. Sparrow. Right, Sorry. Yeah. You had me. me. You had me. And they lost me. That's where I lose them. I know. No, I do not think anyone likes Arma, but I like, I had it in my playthrough, so I'm kind of like biased, but I love that guy. So. <laughs> okay, great, great. All right, that's fun. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, I, I do think Armourouge is cool. I just remember getting in classic in an argument with Doom Snacks and Spraggles. And I'm like, Armourouge is cool. And they're like, no, it's not. I'm like, yes, oh. he is. He's Mega Man. And then it was I like, know. I guess it just really takes the, you love Mega Man or do you know? Um, Are you more True. excited for the more rangy build of Armourouge or more of the brawler style build? Okay, the brawler build does not look does not look fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that so much. funny. Bridget, you and I have never been further apart. <laughs> like, that means... Uh, like, that move looks so boring. I know. Are you serious? Oh, it looks fun. <laughs> you just... Ow! You're the fire spin and you're flame charge into your boosted. I don't know. It, it looks like the knock-up on Maybe the, the flame Maybe the boosted charges. is cooler than I think it is, but... yeah. I don't know. Okay, so th obviously, if, if anybody hasn't seen any videos, Spraggles has got a great, like, everything you need to know about Armourouge video. It's genuinely fantastic. You should check that out if you want to pick it up in the next couple of days. Um, but it basically has two builds. You have the Fire Spin and Flame Charge. Fire Spin basically gives you a big AoE of a fiery spinning thing around you. And then Flame Charge allows you to, like, like kind of dash into people with a bit of a knockup. Just a dash. Yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> but then there's <laughs> but if you go flame charge armor cannon hell okay but anyway oh, and then, okay. then the other fun. options you have armor cannon and psy shock i think it's the other build right like you could go yes. with so um psy shock it seems kind of really unique in the game that we have so far it's like a three stage damage hit however the final damage hit has a bit of a knock up and then armor cannon it looks so you just like literally charge up your little mega man blaster and you fire like it is just Yes, it's so scratching the itch that I didn't know I had. <laughs> you know, like his animation looks so kind of dorky <gasps> and fun. Like I love it. It's the so unite good. animation too looks He's so dead. sick. I'm I they always actually really kill it with like mm -hmm. the move and the model design. For so sure. I will I'm say kind of a sucker for that. The unite move, uh, while it looks cool, I think is generally boring. Like, yeah, it's not, it like, doesn't do much. Breaking. It's so strange. Like, I feel like they killed it with the rest of the kit, and then the nightmare was just like, man, big hit, kind of a knock. It's like, all right. It's very Cinderace. It's like, what if, Mar it's like, what if Maridon's Unite only hit once? <laughs> You're like, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, jumping, I wonder, like, is he, can you, like, hit him when he's, like, jumping in the air? I wonder how, like, well, cancelable it is. Okay, well, yeah. sh shut up. I wonder how cancelable it is. That is like, true. That'll be interesting. How delicate is he <laughs> when yeah. he's jumping up? I haven't paid like that much attention to the. They should go all stuff. in. Give him rocket boots. Give him like Dragonite Unite, where he could like move across the map, and he like Ooh. he like bombards from the air for a little bit. God, he'd be so cool. <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, maybe we'll look forward for the Armorer's rework 
when this Pokemon yeah. releases in two days. Anyway, I think it looks pretty cool. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, I think we're pretty positive about that. One thing we're not so positive about, though, and I think most of the community was not, is a host of price changes have hit the game, all in the negative fashion. I think for the most part, unless you're like, yeah, more coins every week. <laughs> I don't I know if you were excited about spending those. Spending money for less. Yeah, biggest change uh, recently. We talked a lot about the membership changes on a previous podcast episode. Those are still in effect, but the battle pass has increased in gem prices. And word on the street, aka data mines, is that Pokemon with their like week long gem lock will also be increasing in terms of price. So make sure to retweet those content creators <laughs> next week when you uh, you want to grab that license for free if possible I, overall it's it's not great fortunately bridget you and i are in the west where the change is not great but it's more marginal where these changes really start to hurt is when you're in markets where your dollar or your currency is a lot weaker compared to yeah. the base currency right so like if you're paying like uh in, in a country like I think India gets hit pretty hard by this, where all of a sudden it is a very expensive purchase because uh, it just moves up marginally, right? It doesn't scale the way you would like it to. So mm -hmm. I think some parts of Europe as well gets a little more tough. Um, I think, reminder, you can buy gems on, like, the web store. Um, just a reminder there for people. If you don't want to buy it in-game, I know it's less convenient. Um, but I do believe you could do that. Same with Pokemon Go and things like that. I think you can... Technically, yeah, technically I, say you're paying whatever currency you want. Um, not that we're. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know uh, you can do that for Go because it's cheaper usually, yes. or there's there's more deals like on the mm -hmm. browser because they don't like have to the pay app. the app store purchases, right? So they mm -hmm. don't have to share revenue there, so they can afford to have better deals there. So, yeah, um, definitely have a thing there. So yeah, a uh, wideness I think hit the nail on the head for the most part of the topic is that things getting more expensive at the same time they're making the membership worse it really hurts like they're they're making things more expensive and they're not giving anything in return and they're not even like yeah confusingly like oh we thought you'd like this kind of thing you know what i mean um there was there have been some changes right like a lot of free event passes that have premium options so theoretically yeah. more free to play things that you can uh try to collect and earn the game that's good it's a good free to play change it's just like you're pay to pay to play or just pay to enjoy i'll call it <laughs> players aren't getting anything more for the increased price which is really strange like why would you create yeah. that divide more but yeah anyway bridget any of your thoughts on this topic no i mean it just feels like why would you give us something for so long and then scale it back without mm -hmm. giving us something else of like equal value and then make it more ex it's just like the opposite mm -hmm. if you're gonna make it more expensive okay it doesn't even like it's just it's I basic know. like business pricing like give us something that's not quite worth you know another color wave of whatever another hair like mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be anything like significantly crazy another yeah honestly like the card stickers i'm kind of getting like um, i'm over that I, okay. I kind of like character <laughs> customization i like character customization i like skins for my pokemon you know uh -huh. stuff everyone likes like i don't understand taking stuff away and then also increasing price it just doesn't yeah. make any it doesn't make any sense to mm -hmm. me at all <laughs> yeah so if we take like a step back we try to view it as unite developer or, like whatever business practice is making these decisions i don't know if it i don't know if it's timmy the pokemon whatever, company yeah. where this choice is, is happening right i think the easiest assumption to come to is that this game this game needs to make more money in their eyes they are trying to generate more revenue now i don't know if these changes will generate more money maybe they will like you know like uh, people might not like it but it might work for them which sucks um but that might be the change that they need to do it's just i guarantee i don't guarantee because i don't know for a fact but i feel like it would make more money if you just up the prices of things that people are already paying for but then you know added in some more stuff in your digital game where it's all made up and it doesn't cost you more money <laughs> like if the membership increased in price a little bit more and they gave you like an effect spray 
like once a yeah. like a thirty day effects yeah, break. Temporary, yeah. Like something they, you they don't only, even... they're already temporary. Trust me, I'm know, so sad I when know. they go away. <laughs> but like you give like a thirty day of the new version. I actually love that they're making like new effects sprays with each. I, I, do I think like that's them. so sick. The cyber one's great. Like uh, Gengar spacesuit cyber spray. Mm, yes, please. <laughs> um, and you get more performance points. We can talk about that at a different time. Um, oh, God. But uh, if you just give the thirty day spray, you know, like ah, you remember it for this month. This is one of your rewards. Great. And then maybe the gems go up like a little bit. I don't know. But yeah, you can increase the price there. Increase the price of the battle pass. I saw Chris Heroes mention this. Like, the increase the price of the battle pass. Maybe we put the move effects in the battle pass for the skin. <laughs> like, or, instead like, of. Add another. Like, they have like the two tiers, even though like the second tier, you just like jump ahead and. Right levels but like make another tiered like give uh, but yeah. maybe they've done the math and they're like if we do these changes we expect to lose you know 30 mm -hmm. percent. but if we retain 70 percent, we'll more than make up for the people you know i have to assume they've done the math and they're like it's worth losing however many people but yeah. i don't know i've i i don't i haven't seen anyone who is like I gotta get this battle pass other than people who are like diehard Greninja people. Yeah, I mean, I got it. I really like the skin. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, and like, but... that's who, that's, they were like, if we just need to get however many people are gonna be like diehard about it, like, right. we don't, I, I don't know. I have to assume that's mm -hmm. been the deciding factor, like you said, like, they want mm -hmm. to make more money. Yeah, I uh, want need you know we can start throwing around terms too i, I don't know it's released in china man <laughs> that's that's a big thing right the game is soon to be released in china and hey great segue bridget uh because the final topic that we <laughs> wanted to mention and again we'll keep it quick we're running really late on time but um right. <laughs> nothing for you to apologize for i'm the yapper uh but <laughs> we um we did have one cool change so this is mostly gonna be to fans of overdunk who have listened to the china deep dive episode we did oh probably a couple months ago at this point I honestly forget but gecko yeah. kami joined bridget and i and we went basically <laughs> point for point through all of the changes between the chinese beta version of the game and the global version of the game and one of the big changes and one of our biggest talking points during that episode uh was the held items the held items were completely reworked in fact their base effects, very similar to the global game, or I shouldn't say their base effects, their passive effects, uh, their more ability-oriented parts of them were the same. However, they could give you any stat. Um, a wise glasses could give you physical attack, technically. You would never want that. Wise glasses is maybe the worst example I could have given. But, like, float stone could give you special attack or something is a better way to say yeah. it, right? Um, with your with your base sets, depending on how you got them from the gotcha. Well, in the most recent version of the beta, that has been removed, and basically held items are a lot more like they are in our version, where they are upgradable via item, I don't know if they're actually item enhancers or whatever, they are upgradable in some way, <laughs> so you can like customize them, which is a hilarious way to describe that, but whatever. Um, and they just basically went back to the global version, which, I don't know. I <laughs> I was like equal parts anxious and excited about new changes to held items like that with seeing them exist in the China version of the game because I love the idea of like having very cool specific items tailored to whatever Pokemon you want to use it. But maybe they were just finding it was entering like broken stances and probably the biggest reason they probably got a ton of feedback that people hated the gotcha. And they, and they like, yes. dropped it, right? Like, that is most likely the change. But, um, Bridget, how are you feeling about that being absent now from the current version of the Chinese beta? Uh, like, you were kind of getting at, it feels double-edged. Like, mm -hmm. having the custom customization that was possible with it was actually pretty, like, exciting and cool to think about. But mm -hmm. the mechanic being from a gotcha system it actually reminds i don't know if i mentioned this when we were initially talking about it but the whole like gotcha on the item thing makes me think of like genshin impact like sure. yeah you have like i don't play i just have like all my friends play it and i know whatever all the characters have like some custom item that you also get from a gotcha system and if you get their weapon mm -hmm. you have to upgrade it but it's like random what <laughs> whatever you don't get the crit ratio it's cooked you know like that is i so i understand how why they kind of 
looked into doing something like that with our items. That's mm-hmm. definitely what it reminds me of. But yeah, making anything behind like RNG mm-hmm. it just is inherently kind of stinky. Any mechanical piece behind RNG, right? Yes. You throw cosmetics yes. behind there all you want. I don't care. But like, yeah, yeah exactly. That is, that is the the big change up there. I, I think. Man, I, we've talked about Pokemon Go a few times on this episode, but I feel like Pokemon Go in a similar fashion um, with how you just you get Pokemon for PvP, you're looking for specific mm, yeah. stats, right? So you're like, well, I caught three Charmanders, and this Charmander is is like a two star. This one's a one star. Like it is similar in that fashion, but like they're trying to fill Bro. a specific niche. Um, obviously. Those are both collector-based games, and Unite is not a collector-based game, so they end up in a different pattern. Yeah. But um, yeah, overall, I, I was excited about the concept, but I am kind of happy we won't have to deal with the onslaught <laughs> of like people raging at Gacha if it ever did get transitioned to global. So maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, like we said, double-edged sword, but I think I'm leaning on the positive side. Uh, with something like that. There were a few other changes. Uh, I think the mini map got updated with some cooldown timers um, around the map. Even the even the, like the basement Reggies who are spawning on both sides of the map now got them. So it's going to be a lot of timers on the map. I don't know if those will last. That feels like a lot of visual clutter on the mini map. But <sighs> that being said, more information is better than lack of information, right? I mean, <laughs> Unite players aren't as used to this, but MOBA players, like, you're... Your screen where you play on is like this, and you're looking at numbers everywhere else. You got your opponent's CS, the towers left, your gold income, what items you're buying, like everything, right? Like your uh, MOBAs in general are, are quite screen cluttery <laughs> genre of games. So um, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not that big of a deal, but I think that finally brings us to the end of the episode, Bridget. <laughs> I think we did it. Overdunk episode 117 coming to a close. Uh, Bridget, is there anything you'd like to shout out or anything like that before we close up shop? I actually don't think so. Okay. I'm chilling. Cool. Well, uh, I did want to mention this. We talked about it on last episode, but I'm going to be mentioning it every single episode, basically, until it happens. Market calendars, October 19th. The Unite Mike's Charity Classic is going to return. We got a lot of fun stuff planned for you. A lot of fun stuff in the works. Uh, but of course, the biggest portion of that event is going to be a tournament starting in the afternoon. Um, open to NAEU in LATAM. We're going to have more details coming about that very, very soon. Um, but that will be the United Mike's Charity Classic, October 19th. We're going to be fundraising for an organization called Hope for the Day. Uh, that is a suicide prevention organization. And saying that today on the day of recording feels pretty solid so um just want to remind everybody of um of that event coming up next month there'll be a lot more details posted on our socials and stuff about it as the day gets closer but uh i think until next time hopefully next episode we're gonna be talking a lot about the championship series as that is gonna be starting relatively soon in november hopefully we so get a rule book if we do yeah i know it's actually so crazy but oh my god oh it's nuts okay we'll be talking about all of that stuff very soon for now we're gonna say goodbye and we'll see you all next time on the next episode of overnight goodbye everybody